All right. So we're going to start with this, guys. I want to know what your most interesting storyline, the thing that you're most interesting to watch in the Big Ten uh, is this year. And Fanta, I'm going to you first. All eyes on Indiana. Because I'm first, I'll go with the team picked at the top of the league. Look, college basketball is better when Bloomington is buzzing. And it might be the obvious pick for the top storyline, but it is the pick because, guys, if Indiana can make the deep tournament run, everybody in college hoops is going to benefit from it. They are one of the biggest brands in the sport. They have not been to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament in seven years. It's been a little while. This program has not been to an Elite Eight and even longer than that, we're talking over, well over a decade. So there's a drought. There's a drought. And they've got the pieces. Look at the hoops hysteria at Assembly Hall Friday night. And you tell you, you answer the question of what does Indiana mean to college basketball between Trace Jackson Davis and Race Thompson, Miller Cop, Xavier Johnson, the returnees. They return four starters. Then you bring in Jalen Hood Shafino. You bring in uh, Malik Renault. Renault, they have a terrific freshman class. Mike Woodson, to me, was the hire. I remember being inside Hinkle Fieldhouse when the hire was made. And everyone's like, God, they're just going to be rough forever. God, Indiana's never going to get it right. God, I don't like this hire at all. All those takes at the time, I get it. I get why those takes happen. But now he has a chance to have this redemption tour at his alma mater, with Indiana basketball and All-American and TJD, that's fun. And that has to be the top storyline in the Big Ten. Now the question is, how is Indiana going to handle all of that hype? How are they going to handle all that hype? One thing they got going for them, they were the Big Ten's best Ken Palm adjusted defensive efficiency team last year. They don't have to learn defense. They know how to do it. That's a credit to Woodson. He got that installed last year, and Indiana will guard you. The question is, will they make enough perimeter shots on the other end of the floor? I think it's important that we point out one of the biggest critics of that hire was our very own Jeff Goodman. Yes, he was. He was one of the biggest critics of that hire. I think that's uh, to be noted. Um, I also would just, you know, we'll get into it in a little bit. Tio, what's your biggest story like? Because I have a lot of thoughts. I, I, on I just wonder if we, the media, are going to get completely infatuated with the Big Ten and the non-conference like we have every other year, just for them to flame out at the, in the NCAA tournament. And I, I'm saying that with all love in my heart, but look at some of the different leagues throughout the country. The Big Ten keeps their guys, and credit to them for doing that. There's not a ton of transfers outside of Illinois. There's not a ton of new pieces that come in. It's guys that are that are brought in through their program. So what happens during the non-conference is they're going to be good because they already know their system. Where other leagues that are aren't judged in the same or that nice. don't do so well in their early season, they're still learning their pieces. ACC, throw that part in there, like. They rely a lot on freshmen. They rely a lot on transfers. Big yep. Ten doesn't do that. They're going to be good early just to flame out later. That's what's been happening. And a lot of what the thing is with the Big Ten, what wins in the Big Ten doesn't necessarily win in the big dance. So, like, Bingo. that's what it is. In the Big Ten, if you look at all these different preseason, not, I, the Almanac, I don't have it right in front of me, but, like, a good majority of the first team all-conference teams are all bigs. Doesn't necessarily win in the big, in the big dance. So, like, are we going to fall in love again with the Big Ten that's going to go to the big dance and struggle? That's my biggest question. Yeah. No, the, the, the point about um, what you need to win in the Big Ten not being what you need to win in any other league in basketball, no matter the level, is, is prescient. My, my take is that – or my most interesting storyline story is, is that this league stinks. Like, this league is not – it's not what the Big Ten has been the last couple of years. I there thought it was just going to be me. I thought I was going to no, take the run of not only Iowa, but every every state in the Big Ten country. I, well, I see, I, I push back on the people that say that the Big Ten was overrated the last couple of years. I think that it was absolutely loaded the last couple of years. It just didn't have one of those elite teams, right? Like, it didn't have a top five team the last couple of years. It just had 10 teams that were in that, like, 10 to 25 range. And I think this year it has, like, one, maybe two teams in that 10 to 25 range at the top. Like, let's take Indiana, for example, right? We're all hyping this team up. We're all getting excited about this group. We're all saying, like, oh, they got a real chance to do some things. Well, they finished last season ranked 48th in Ken Palm. To be able to get to the NCAA tournament, they needed to collapse from Michigan. 
uh, in the Big Ten tournament to be able to make that happen. Um, they are relying on a point guard in Xavier Johnson, who has the only thing he's done consistently throughout his career is play inconsistent. And their best lineup is going to have Trace Jackson Davis, who's never made a three-pointer in college, and Race Thompson, who shot 27% from three last year on yep. the floor at the same time together. Yes. And they were 48th in Ken Palm last year. Like, what's uh, are we really sitting here banking on Jalen Hood Shafino being the guy that can change all of this? Tamar Bates taking a step forward and being the guy that can change all of this? I don't know. I, I think it's very possible. I don't I know. Think if I'm part, ready fully, I, don't I think, think I'm part ready. of it, sorry to break in, I think part of it is the amount they return. And I think the bigger part of it is how much the rest of the league lost. Well, yeah, for sure. And I, I don't, I, I think that they're the favorite to win the league. I'm just saying, I don't think that I buy in all the way on them being more than like a, uh, I'd probably have them outside the top 20 in the preseason top 25. And they would be the only team for me that was ranked um, wow. Illinois. They lost Kofi. They lost like eight of their top 10 pieces. They're bringing back players like Terrence Shannon and Matthew Meyer, or bringing in transfers like Terrence Shannon and Matthew Meyer, who like never quite hit it um, at their previous stops. They're relying on Coleman Hawkins, who has all of this potential and has the ability to probably be a lottery pick and average six points yep. and four boards last season. Um, Michigan lost four of their five starters. They bring back Hunter, but they're going to be relying on three freshmen or an up transfer from uh, from from Princeton. Or, oh, very uh, good player. We'll, we'll get into that. He was we'll a get top one hundred kid at high school. No, I know, but I'm saying like he's a he's an up transfer from Princeton. Yeah, and there's they, I actually think that he's going to fit there a lot better than Devontae Jones did just because of his athleticism and the fact that like he wasn't built to play in a Princeton style, but it's still like you have a a transfer from the Ivy league and a bunch of freshmen and a sophomore that didn't really do anything last year surrounding Hunter Dickinson. Like how, why am I supposed to buy all the way in on a team that lost four of their five starters and then Michigan state, whatever Purdue lost Jaden Ivy, like Wisconsin. Are we really going to trust a team that has a guy named Chucky Hepburn? And, and as their star point guard, the breakout player, like I just. And keep in mind, too, that's the same team that needed Johnny Davis to save their ass in yes. a, billion, a billion times last year. Yeah. So let's get let's get into it, guys. Let's uh, the, the second subject that we're going to get into is like, who's the yep. favorite twin? Are you guys both saying it's Indiana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah as it should be. Um, but I do think that the biggest adversary to Indiana is Michigan. I really do think it's Michigan. I mean, Michigan made an Elite Eight two years ago and a Sweet 16 last year, despite all the ups and downs. They still made it to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament, and they still have Hunter Dickinson back, mm -hmm. who you could argue does more things for a team than Trace Jackson Davis does. It's, for Michigan, it just comes down to what they're going to get from their backcourt, and that's a big, big, big if, but... I do think that Michigan's the biggest adversary. I think that's where the debate starts in the Big Ten, T.O. and Rob, is, okay, if Indiana is the front runner, who is the team that challenges them the most? And I'm going to go with Jawan Howard of Michigan based on track record and based on the fact that they have an All-American back leading them. Yeah, it, I actually like the, like the addition of Joey Baker from Duke. I think he's going to be a better player for Michigan than what Caleb Houston was. Like Caleb I agree with that from a fit standpoint, although I what about Houston as a defender? And a rebound. I, I thought he, I think he's addition by subtraction. He was all potential, no production. Fair. And I think Joey will understand his role. He's going to, he's going to stay within what they're going to do. And he's going to be able to space the floor. I think as far as a fit is concerned, he's going to be a better player. Uh, to me, it's all going to come down to uh, like, where's the buzzer, T.O.? Point guard play. Big yeah. Guard. Every exactly. team, you look at the top five spots, the, the top five teams in this conference, um, Indiana, right? Xavier Johnson is pro I think we can say when he's at his best, he's a what top eight point guard in America yeah. at worst, maybe top five when he's playing his best. I think he's really good. I, I think yeah. Xavier Johnson's really good. And I, when he's playing, when he's playing at his best, he is very, very, very good, but he's, it's a little bit of like the Caleb love dynamic, right? Where we don't always know that we're going to get good Xavier Johnson. Now, if he's the guy that he was over the course of the last three weeks of last season, then, then I think Indiana is probably, like they're they're very clearly the best team in this conference. They have the best five man. They have the best point guard, and they have a, they have enough role pieces where they should be able to get the job done in the Big Ten in this league, right? But Xavier Johnson's also a guy that can shoot you out of a game if he decides to have one of his two for fifteen performances. I think you look at the point guard spot in Michigan. We talked about Jalen Llewellyn. I'll let you say your piece on him in a second, T.O., because I know you know a lot about him. But he's a guy. You, 
I, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse, but you bring in a transfer from, from the Ivy League, there's no guarantee that they're going to be great. Yep. Um, I, I think you look at Illinois, Sky Clark, freshman coming off a torn ACL. Kid's got a ton of potential. He's a bucket getter. He's athletic. I think he's a good player. He's still a freshman coming in off a torn ACL. Uh, I am not completely sold on the AJ Hoggard uh, or AJ Hogard um, Tyson Walker combination at Michigan State being good enough to get it done. And you look at Purdue, they lost Jaden Ivey. They had point guards issues last last year. They lost Eric um, Hunter, Eric Hunter to Butler. And I think they're probably going to end up starting a, a, a freshman at the point as well. Yeah. Um, so got the kid from I'm Utah not, as well. Yeah. The, the, uh, what's the transfer that he was at UNLV? I'm blanking on his, uh, David Jenkins, David Brady Jenkins. Smith, Fletcher Lawyer. Like, there's, there's, those are probably the top five teams in the conference. And there are question marks at the point for all of them. There's question marks at the point for Ohio State, who's another really good team that we're not like, so I just, there's a lot of issues at the point guard spot, which is part of the reason why I'm sitting here. Like, I, I'm not sold on any of these teams nationally. I like Indiana for the, those reasons. I like uh, Jalen Llewellyn's a good player, mm-hmm. and like he he's big. He's six three, probably bigger, a little bit bigger than that. He probably put on some good weight while he was admission, while he's been there this summer. He's a really good player. Now the rest of their pieces, we got to wait and see, right? But the team with the highest upside is Illinois. Yes, uh, especially with Terrence Shannon coming in, Meyer coming in. Uh, Sky Clark's got to be great. He's a big, strong kid, but like he, I think he he needed to lose a little weight in the offseason. I think he's done that. But they, like Underwood coaching this guy and being so was it multi dimensional because of how they can score, who can score, where the ball's going to be. Like they might not win the Big Ten, but they could be the team that ends up going the furthest in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I, I think of, that's exactly the way that I view them. I, I don't think that they're – I would bet on them to win the Big Ten. If I had to bet on someone from the Big Ten to make the Final Four, it would probably be Illinois because their ceiling is higher than anyone else's ceiling. Does that make I'm sense? I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I, and I think Michigan State's going to Michigan State. They'll end up making it. Uh, sorry, we were going to talk about underrated. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. No, no, let's go to underrated. Let's do that. Let's do that now. Yeah. I think we all agree – it's in some order, it's Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, the top of the conference, and we all tend to lean. And the crazy it. part, Lindy's had him at seventh, Illinois. Oh, okay. that's insane. Well, Lindy's yeah, is Lindy's damn wrong. Had him, had Illinois I'll tell seven. you what, Lindy's is twelve ninety nine. If you are an Illinois fan and if you're a Big Ten fan and you want some real accurate <laughs> analysis for what the conference is going to look like, save those $13. Pay the seven dollars extra, and I promise you, I promise you that the analysis that you're going to get from the almanac is worth the seven dollars that you would have spent, or the seven dollars more that you're going to spend. Because if you have Illinois seventh in the Big Ten, you're yeah. out of your fucking mind, and you don't know what you're talking about. Fanta, who is the most underrated team in the Big Ten? Iowa, Iowa, baby! I will champion the Hawkeyes. Go ahead, walk out on me. Chris Murray is poised to have a big year for that team. They bring back the McCaffrey brothers as well. Peyton Sanford, to me, is an X factor and a perimeter threat for them. Fran McCaffrey keeps getting doubted in this league. He loses Luca Garza. Everyone's like, oh, they'll probably take a step back. Keegan Murray was unbelievable for them. Chris Murray is now ready to take the torch. Who else would you rather have in terms of being able to hand that torch off Two, he learned from his brother. He knows what the system is. Fran's very good at molding his teams. He's obviously got his sons. And he's got a team that I think had a couple of freshmen last year, had a couple of younger guys, underclassmen, that are ready to take the next step. So for me, the Hawkeyes, who, as I look at the Big Ten preseason poll, they were picked to finish seventh in the league. It would not surprise me at all to see them in a battle, a tie for third or a tie for fourth. They will finish higher than seven. They're underrated. I, I don't. I actually don't disagree with that. Um, I think it's going to be fascinating. Like again, they're another team with point guard issues. I think Tony Perkins is an X factor there. I think uh, yep. Peyton Sanford has like he's giving me some Joe Wieskamp vibes. There, there's uh-huh. a lot of. Uh, a lot of good things coming out of uh, – is it Iowa City? Where are they? Where, where Iowa are they? City. It doesn't matter. Iowa matter. City. It's a beautiful place to take in a game. A lot the of good things good coming thing out of Iowa City. about that place, you can see Nebraska. That's the only <laughs> good thing about that place. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you underrated. are so mean to them. Oh, man. I just I, – I think the 
the Chris Murray storyline is going to be fascinating to me simply because like, yeah. yep. there's going to be so much pressure on that dude. And like, if, if his name was like Chris Oglesby or Chris <laughs> Fanta, I think he'd be in a much better situation. But the fact that his brother bucket. went from being like his, Keegan was what Chris Murray Keegan as a freshman is what Chris Murray was last year. So everyone's going to be expecting Chris Murray this year to be what Keegan was last year. Does that make sense? Yes. And I think that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid that, to, to like, if you're not a first team all American, then you fucking suck. Like that's, that's yep. a lot. Tio, who's your most underrated player? The golden gophers. I like you. Minnesota. Like it. Minnesota is going to be pretty good. Ben Johnson in his second season is the administration is thrilled with that hire. They love him and they've mm. done a pretty good job in the transfer portal and now they get Dawson Garcia who's on his 12th school in two years or whatever it is he started out at Marquette and then goes to Carolina North Carolina and then ends up at Minnesota back in his home state I believe uh, a really yes. talented lefty big who kind of fits the profile but he could stretch it a little bit I think it makes him a little bit different than other five men in the Big Ten Conference not only that this Taylon Cooper of the Moorhead State transfer who finished top 10 in the country in assists he goes there and that's to go along with Jamison Battle who's one of the best scorers in the Big Ten over 17 points a game last year I think Minnesota's on the right track and the Almanac has him at 13th the that's, Almanac yeah. has him at 13th I, I think did, that's I a little bit low, and I think that they're well coached. They're they're energetic. They have pieces, and they have guys that can score it. Uh, the Golden Gophers are going to be much better this season. I think that they're closer to like the the Wisconsin Rutgers range than they are in that like yes State Nebraska. I don't even know why than the Nebraska. Um, I think Nebraska they can range. creep in that seven eight nine range. Yep, in a bad Big Ten. If things if things go well, if things go well. If things them. go um, well, of course. I mean, I have dedicated on everything. My most underrated team, and I, I want to see Fanta's face when I say this, the Maryland Terrapins. We are not talking enough about the Maryland Terrapins. I think Dante Scott has a chance to be a first-team All-Big Ten player this year. I Akeem like Hart, Julian Reese, like you need those guys to take a step forward. I think they have the kind of length and athleticism yep. and versatility that you would want out of players in those positions. I think when you give Kevin Willard, Three dudes like Akeem Hart, Dante Scott, and Julian Reese, and then give them a pair of guards and Jamar Young. Uh, I'm sorry, Jameer Young and Donald yep. Carey. Now, there's not a lot of guys in that program that have won games before, right? Bingo. Jame Jameer Young was was on a losing basketball team at Charlotte. Don Carey will average 13 and three or whatever it was on the worst Georgetown team that we have ever seen, right? So you have a lot of I. I I don't want to say losing basketball players, but basketball players that have been on losing teams coming into this program. There's not a ton of depth, but if you look at that roster and look at the way that it's built, that was not that team was seven and 13 in the Big Ten last year because their coach quit eight games into the season. Right. So I think you bring in. We Kevin still Williams. had to wear a hot dog suit, didn't we, Fanta? Yeah. We still had to wear that hot dog suit. Man. Yeah. And there was bad. no, there was no justification then. Yeah, so I, I do the think only, that Maryland – to me, Maryland's a, a top half of the Big Ten team. I think that they – there's a non-zero chance that they can creep and crack that tier that has like Michigan State and Purdue as, as a top five team. I think that – Yeah, the, the only issue with Maryland is the Big Ten did not do them any favors with that schedule, nor were they going to do Maryland any favors. Maryland's front end of the, of the Big Ten schedule, listen to this, and Willard, he'll let us know about it. Yeah, I was I was gonna say I know exactly where this is coming from. <laughs> New Year's New Year's Day at Michigan. Happy New Year. January 5th, Thursday night at Rutgers. January 8th, home to Ohio State. Winnable game. Ohio State, though, I think could be a dark horse in this league. Guys, that's the first three. The fourth game at Iowa. Home Michigan at Purdue. It's really hard to start with. It's, with it's the Big Ten. You could win. you could pick six teams out of a hat, play three of them on the road and three of them at home, and the but, schedule's going to suck. Yeah, like, but it, it, just because they didn't happen to get North Nebraska and Northwestern, Northwestern, Penn, Penn State. State. Yeah, cut, like come on, the Willard. Willard, look, you're in the Minnesota. Big Ten now. Look, Ke Coach Willard, Kevin, you're in the Big Ten now. It's not the Big East anymore. You got to put on your big boy pants. You're going to have to play some tough games. Okay. Oh, you're not, wait. You're not, wait gonna, a you're not going to be going on the road. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Are you <laughs> suggesting <laughs> they don't play big boy games in the Big East? I mean, look, he played at DePaul, so like it, it, the teams are a little bit better than. Yeah, DePaul. but he gets to play at Nebraska in the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah, he gets to We're play Nebraska and Penn State. Go ahead. Hey, look, Nebraska. 
Nebraska will put 15,000 people in, in, in that arena. Yeah. To get it, watch them get beat by 30. Yeah. Right. To get beat by 30. They'll put Penn state. You can hand out tickets for free. They wouldn't know where to go. Yeah. Penn state would, would be like, how come Christian Hackenberg's not playing basketball right now? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, give me your, uh, let, let, you know what? Let's do, uh, what we expect, like the, the level of, can I get Maryland kudos team. though? Yeah, it was. That was good, man. You got to give him some props. There, yeah. I was going to be back. Not only that, just if you go up and down the rosters in the Big Ten, the fact that Willard's put so much emphasis on dominating the DMV, and they've done a nice job with a bunch yeah. of high school seniors coming in, like give it two years. Willard can coach oh, yeah. with anybody. He's yeah. going to get the talent uh, that, be honest with you guys, yeah. it exceeds the other talent that the rest of the league yeah. is and getting. And they, they like they like the uh, the Cornish kid that, that the uh, he registered last year. Um, Noah Bachelor, the kid coming in that he originally committed to Memphis, can really, really shoot it. And then they brought in the kid from uh St. St. Francis, Brooklyn. Um, Patrick, M- I can't, I'm gonna butcher his name. I think it's it's Emmeline, I think it's how you pronounce his last name, but he's gonna be like a stretch four that will be able to create. Like, they're gonna be good. They're gonna be able, I think they'll make the tournament. Um, I think so. You know what? Let's talk, good. let's talk about expectations for these teams. All right. Is there anyone in this conference that you would call a final four contender? Uh, not this year. I don't think so. I don't think I would call anyone a final four contender. Is there anyone here that you think can set a level of expectation where they say, if we don't make the elite eight, it's not a good season. I don't think there is. Not this year. No, I no, I don't think so. Well, because like, if you don't make it there, so then the season's a failure. No, yeah, it's, well, so it's like, I think no. Indiana can make the elite eight. Yeah, I think, I think they that, could, but he's saying if they didn't make it, it would be a disappointment. Yeah, right. there, no. there's no one, there's no one in this conference that's at the level of a uh, a Kentucky or a Gonzaga or a North Carolina or a Houston or a Kansas. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no one in that tier in this league, right? Who do you think is a legit second weekend team in this conference? The top three: uh, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan. Yep. I I don't even know if I would. I think I would say that it would be a great season for any of those three if they got to the second weekend. Well, I, I think it'd be a good season for Indiana. I think it's the expectation that they make it to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. I think for Michigan, it's kind of become the norm. So yeah. if they don't make the Sweet 16, that actually is disappointing. Like, I, I, I'm not saying that it is it from our standpoint, but it is inside their building. And then for Illinois, like, wouldn't it be kind of ironic – that in the first year with Val Kofi, they make the run in March Madness. Like, I kind of get that vibe about them, and I think they're going to play very differently. Obviously, they have to. But I think that their makeup this year, and, and Underwood alluded to, to this with me a couple of weeks ago, like, he's not exactly shunning the the new makeup of, of it potentially being better for his team. I think you're going to see the best version of Brad Underwood this year. Because that dude can coach. I agree. And now he's got a lot more tools and a lot of more versatile pieces yep. than he's had. You know, Io DeSumnu dominated the ball when he was there. Kofi Coburn just cluttered everything up a lot when he was there. Like, now you're going to have all these multidimensional pieces that can move. And then, like, this kid, Dane Danger, that they got from Baylor is a pretty good player. Yep. And they could throw it the ball, they could throw it to him in the post, and he could get you a couple off the bench if that's what where they decide to use him. Like they got RJ Melendez, Luke Good, or two guys that can take a step forward. And I will say this: this is a direct quote from Brad Underwood from the Almanac. Our system is going to be suited to Coleman Hawkins. Yeah. So having him at the five this year, I think, is going to be a big difference. They're versatile. Like I said, they have the highest ceiling of anybody in this league. Yes. And yeah. I would not be surprised to see them be a four seed that loses to a 13. I think that that's just that's who Illinois is. And I, think and I hope they're going to be this. I season. also think it's entirely possible that they make a heck of a run. I do too. If Coleman Hawkins like takes off to where we think he can take yeah. off. Yeah, I, I said it earlier. Too. They're the only team that I think has a real chance to make the Final Four in this conference. I'd push back a little bit on Michigan being a, a Sweet Sixteen team. I think they're more like probably want to win a game in the tournament, and I think they're they'll be in like that six to eight seed range. All right, uh, tournament teams: Ohio State, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. With a chance to be dangerous come March. I think they're very different in how they're going to play. I think Bruce Thornton is college ready. I like Roddy Gale. I I think that that Ohio State, to me, is so much more interesting this season than they were last year. I know that they had some more star power, but to me, they're the team in the Big Ten that could make the biggest leap 
from November to March just because they have such a fountain of youth. And I think that youth with Chris Holtman, I think Holt's really, really good. And uh, I like my man Jake Diebler over there. I'm high on Ohio State, bullish, tournament team. Hey, uh, Felix O'Para, freshman, good. Yeah. Talk to me about Bruce good. Thornton. That's your guy, right? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be able to play right away. Yep. He doesn't turn it over. He's smart. He's strong as a bull. I mean, when, like he looks like he could play uh, running back on their football team. Yep. <laughs> like he's strong as a bull. His game is mature. Uh, he's going to be able to shoot it well enough, and he can get them into Holtman's offense. Go ahead, Fanta. Terrence, you didn't say the name loud enough. Felix Opara, right? Very good. Very good player. I, I heard over the weekend that he has a chance to be a stud for the Buckeyes. So watch out for Felix Opara. He's not the the main headliner of the recruiting class, but he's going to be a headliner this season. And you're right. Defensively. Bruce Thornton has a college ready body. Like there's no easing in period there. The key for Ohio state got to have justice suing healthy guys. Yep. You've got to have healthy justice suing. Yeah. And I, I just want to mention um, they brought in Sean McNeil from yeah, West underrated Virginia. Yeah, shooter, knockdown shooter. They brought in ice likely from, uh, from Oklahoma state yeah. like who can't, yep. who can't shoot for shit. So that my biggest issue with this team is if you look at who they have coming in, like uh, just Bryce Sensible. Oh, he's tough, dude. Bryce, I love Sensible. that dude. Uh, so here's here's my thing with this group. I think that they're probably, I would say they're probably a year away from being like a top five team in the league. I think that they can get to a tournament, but I think they're probably a year away from um, quite being. I agree, a year away if they keep all their pieces together from being a top ten team in the country. I agree. I agree with you. I just they're a year away. They're they're where, in my opinion, they were they are now where Virginia was at this time last year. Yes. And like you look at them and you're like, man, they're a year away. They're and, a year away. And, and you and know what's this fun? year, like Virginia's gonna be a bunch of studs. Like Ohio State is there this year. Yeah. And you know what's fun about them? They're doing it the traditional way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yep. All right. Except, uh, except for Sean McNeil. Yep, we we and uh, and ice likely. Um, we talked about uh, we talked about Iowa already, right? We both have them. We all have them in the tournament. Yes. Tournament. Do you think they? They're, what are they? Second weekend, win a game, and you're happy? No, eight nine tournament. game, eight nine game, or in a seven tournament, ten. You're happy. Seven yeah. ten game. Could um, win again. Michigan State. We haven't really talked about them. Michigan State and Purdue. Where do you guys see them? Are they tournament teams? Okay. Michigan. This is State. where it gets dicey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I'm more bullish on Michigan State than probably the others are. I just, I like the summer that they had. Talking with Tom Izzo, there's some momentum there. He credited the guys he's got coming back for really buying back in to their system, to who they are. They're going to have to play small. That is the biggest factor for Michigan State. Matty Sissoko is not going to do it, and and Jackson Kohler, he's a freshman. You can't, ex- I mean, I like him. I like That's it. a tough league for freshmen, too. It's a real tough league for freshmen. Yeah. For me, the p- biggest key for Michigan State is who is going to be the alpha for this team. Because you could say that it's going to be A.J. Hogard, but he's got to then be that guy. I mean, that's those are some big, big shoes. Malik Hall, to me, is they need him to put together a really nice year. And then, guys, like Joey Hauser can't be here today, gone tomorrow. He's got to be an every game player for them because they're probably going to have to play him at the five. They're probably going to have to play him at the five because that's their best personnel well, I, lineup. Michigan I know, State, I know what you're saying. They would have, I, I would say that they probably would have Malik Hall at the five and Joey Hauser at the four with you get my drift. AJ Hogarth, Tyson Walker, and in an ideal world, Jay Nakins. But yep. to me, like that lineup gets really, really interesting. The problem is, like, when have we ever seen Izzo lean all the way into playing a small ball lineup? They yeah. had. Jaron Jackson and Miles Bridges on the same team, and we could not get lineups with Jaron Jackson at the five and Miles Bridges at the four. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we've never seen it. We've yeah, never seen right. it. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I will say Izzo seems to be extremely high on Jaden Akins. So if he breaks out to the level that, that he could, Michigan State could have some nice backcourt play. And at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the matchup wrinkles that they possess with Hall and Hauser. Yeah, and I just want to so, – so we don't get yelled at by Michigan State fans. Yes, Jay Nakins has a foot injury. Yes, he should be back and ready to go by the time that the season really matters. All right, T.O., Malik Purdue, Hall, where do you – Malik Hall was kind of their de facto who we're going to go to at the end of games too. Like yep. have it with a year of that under their belt, like he's going to be able to close some games that he didn't last year. 
So Ooh. hopefully he's a senior this year, man. It's, a t- it's time for put up or shut up time. Um, yeah. Michigan State fans shouldn't be mad at us. We just gave them a lot more respect than others are giving them. Nationally. Yeah, like, so- Michigan State, I, I'd, I'd put them in what is 25 years in a row. They've Unless you're Carter tournament. Elliott. If you're Carter Elliott, you can kiss my ass. T.O., talk to me about Purdue. Zach Eady is a game changer. <laughs> Outside of that, like, I'm, I'm not, I don't really have much for you. Like, we'll just wait and see with Purdue. I just have so much faith in Matt Painter. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. He's just going to figure it out. That, but that, to be honest with you guys, that's where it cuts off for me after Purdue. Like, and, and not only that, the Big Ten needs to be good in the non conference. And with not being as talented as they were last few seasons, it's going to be hard. I, I'll say this, this is not I'll the say Big this Ten about that Purdue. it has been. I'll say this about Purdue. Um, Zach Eady, I, I, we all like, I, what else is there to say about him? He, he's, he's an absolute monster. He's an absolute force. He's a, he's impossible to stop at the college level. I would say Ethan Morton, Caleb first, Mason yeah. Gillis are three guys that all shoot at above 40% that are all switchable defensively that are all willing to sit in there and buy into the job that they're going to be asked to do by Matt Painter, right? They're just good, solid role players that can fit in the system. Brandon Newman um, could be a guy too. Good point. Yeah, you, I mean, you've been absolutely. You've been talking, you talked about him last year, T.O. I remember that specifically. Like, he needs to take a step forward. They need a big year out of David Jenkins, who was awesome at South Dakota State and who was pretty good at. I think he went to. Did he go to UNLV? Right. He went to Utah. Went to Utah. So, yeah. like, he, yeah, he, he's a guy. They need him to be the guy that but, he was two years ago. Braden Smith, freshman coming in at the point. I will say this, though, and then we can move on because I do want to ask you guys about Wisconsin and Rutgers before we, we, we go anywhere else. Um, if you look at the teams that Matt Painter has had in like 2017, 2018, they did not have great point guard play, right? But they built stuff around Isaac Haas, and they were able to have good enough point guard play, good enough shooting, and they just executed that they were able to win a lot of games doing that. So I think that they are going to be – I don't think they're going to be competing for the Big Ten title. I don't think we're going to be talking about them as a potential Final Four team. But if they can kind of get close to what they did last year, 29-8, and 14-6 and six in the Big Ten, finished in like that top four in the league, I think that's very much in the realm of possibility with this group. Although I would say that if they get to the tournament and win a game, that is a good season for them. Uh, T.O., you said the cutoff comes after Purdue for you. Uh, Wisconsin and Rutgers. You don't think either of those teams have a chance to be tournament? Wisconsin lose Brad Davison and Johnny Davis. I mean, you want to talk about the bulk of your team, the emotional leader and crazy person, and then one of the most talented players you've had at that school ever. So the, the, that's going to be a huge issue. Not to mention Johnny Davis. Man, he he saved their butts in about ten games last year. Like for them to be good, it's going to have to be by committee. Chucky Hepburn, fan. However, not a carry the team on my back type of dude. It's going to have to be done by committee. I, I'm not a huge fan of Wisconsin. Of course, you know, you're it, relying whenever on, you lose your best player and in, in one of the most talented players in school history, it's going to be hard. The, yeah, you're the relying on that, Tyler Wall, Stephen Kroll, and um, and Chucky Hepburn. And, like, that is just the – Okay. I can't buy into it. I, I like Rutgers, though. I, Rutgers they, – they, you know what? Their talent doesn't explode off the page, but they got a bunch of dudes that just do winning shit. Yes. Like, they just do winning shit. Like, Caleb McConnell, great defender. Paul Mulcahy, he he just kind of your puzzle piece guy that just does a bunch of winning stuff. And Cliff O'Morier, like, shot blocking big, can hold his own, extremely athletic. And Pykel just finds ways, man. But how many many years in a row has it been to where we're just like, gosh, I I just don't want to go to the rack. Gosh, that's just going to be brutal. Gosh, man, man, they just – they're just tough. Like – Rutgers is that team that's just going to float around and just be there and be a tough out every night they play. Yep. Um, the, the issue with them is going to be depth this year. Uh, I'm also not entirely sold on their point guard play. Paul McKay, he gets it done. Um, and I will tell you this. Watch out for the, the the point guard, the freshman they got coming in, a kid named Derek Simpson. He's actually from down here around me in Mount Laurel um, in New Jersey, and they're, they like him. They think that he's going to be uh, a good player for them, and he's going to have to be – asked to play a bigger role than you would think out of a freshman point guard that was a three-star coming in. So he could kind of be a little bit of a make-or-break guy. Um, Fanta, if, if, anyone... he can play like, if he can play like Ron, Ron Simpson. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Rutgers has never been to three consecutive NCAA tournaments. They have a chance to end that this season. Yeah. Pike Ron has done Simpson a great job. is Derek Simpson's father, who averaged over 20 points a game he, for yeah, three yeah. years at Ryder. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I think that's it for me. I think if you get eight teams, Fanta in the in the big, it's East, a win in the Big Ten. I'm sorry, eight teams. If they get eight teams in the NCAA tournament, the Big Ten has had a great year because it's better than I thought it would have been. I mean, I think they'll probably get. If I had to say it, I'll say seven. But my bold take is no. We'll get to that. Save the bold take. Save the bold take. Player of the year, Fanta. Hunter Dickinson at Michigan. Hunter Dickinson. Yeah, I, I think I think he's going to have that type of a year. Um, I would not be surprised though if Cliff Amorie at Rutgers has a, an average of eighteen and sixteen this year for the Scarlet Knights and is on, oh yeah yeah I think he's poised he's a good for player, eight. yeah I think he's poised for a huge year. He's the best big man in New Jersey in terms of numbers since Angel Delgado at Seton Hall. And Delgado put up massive numbers for them. I like Cliff to do that at Rutgers. But Hunter Dickinson to me, I think he is fired up that he didn't get preseason player of the year. And he reminds us all why he is the best player in the conference. Dickinson. Yep. T.O.? Uh, T.J.D. TJ. I just okay. think. He, all right. Yeah, I just think he's so so fast at that five spot. Like, and it's a league to where he's an obvious mismatch to the majority of the bigs in that conference. I think he's just going to be a monster this year. I think that was probably the easiest pick we've had with all these conferences. <laughs> yeah, I think it's you, you can't go wrong with either of those two. Yeah, either one that. of them are really good. Uh, Omorier, I like that one though. He's a tough sucker. If he stays out of foul trouble, like he's a load. I, I will say this: if Illinois hits their ceiling. And as good as we think they're, if they're as good as we think they're going to end up being, don't look, don't, don't discount Coleman Hawkins being a guy that averages. Okay. Like there's, there's a non zero chance he's like 15, eight, a couple assists, shoots at 38% from three with a block and a block and a half and a steal and a half per game on a team that wins the Big Ten. And like that is pretty good. All right. Coach underrated freshman on Illinois, though. Ty Rogers is a dude. It might, might not be this year, but he's very good. Coach of the year. I got Kevin Willard. I'm, I'm, I'm putting all my chips in the middle on Maryland. Push them all in. You know what the biggest thing is there? When you have a guy. We did that last year, didn't we, Fanta? Yeah. Oh, you were a year too early. When you have a guy who has decided to just wear his hair the same style as Maryland's most famous alum, Scott Van Pelt, I think that's when you have to say, like, look, okay, we got something figured out here. We got an answer here. Who you got? Coach of the year, T.O. Ben Johnson, Minnesota, for all the reasons I said earlier. I just feel like that's a team uh, lying in the weeds waiting to pounce. Fanta? I think Penn State's got a chance to make the NCAA tournament. I really like Jalen Pickett. I think Miles Dredd and Seth Lundy being back is, is interesting. Penn State beat a couple of teams last year in the league that surprised people at the time. But if you remember, they won two Big Ten tournament games. They beat Ohio State last year. I'm going to go outside the box like you two have and say Micah Shrewsbury. If he can get Penn State there, Penn State basketball – greatly needs a resurrection and if he did that he's my coach of the year so i'm going to go out on a limb and say micah yes or no question fanta will chris collins and fred hoiberg last the entire season yes they'll last the entire season and changes will be made at at least one of those schools i never like to talk about guys losing their jobs but it's time for change at both those programs to I, I, I like that answer. I think they both make it through the year, barring some kind of crazy accusation on the program. I, I, I Both of them hang out throughout the year, and then I think there's changes made. Uh, Nebraska, for sure. Uh, Northwestern, the, the expectations aren't the same, but I, I think at least one of the two, you, you're going to see a change. <laughs> At some point, you got to say, like, getting us to a tournament does not get you a lifetime contract. I know you're Northwestern, but it's it was one tournament. OK, yeah, like you got yep. you got to get some shit done. Um, First team all conference. I have written down uh, Hunter and Trace, two obvious ones. I think we're all going to agree. Chris Murray should be on a preseason first team team. Um, I also have Dante Scott, which is going to be a little bit of probably uh, an outsider pick. And then Terrence Shannon of Illinois is my first team. Yeah, I mean, Dante Scott, it's not not too big of a reach. I go TJD. I, there's a – Hood Shafino could make it. Like, he could be a guy for them that that Woodson just hands him a lot of responsibility and ends up being really, really good because he's just so talented. Um, I like the Terrence Shannon pick, TJD, Terrence Shannon. I'm Dickinson, probably going on, on a lid. The problem having... is, is, like, they're all bigs. Yep. They're yep. all bigs. Like – it is I think there's a there's a chance Xavier Johnson could end up being a first team. Could be. 
first team watch out if you do I, the traditional route yeah here's the thing if if minnesota is going to do what to says they could do guys the sheer production of jameson battle is worth consideration bingo if you yes. look at if you look at his numbers and you're voting on these all conference teams keep an eye on jameson battle my mine is pretty simple it's tjd it's hunter dickinson i'm going with ed because if purdue's going to be any good zach ed's got to be strong i'm going chris murray if I'm riding the Iowa train, I got to ride Chris Murray. And then I'm going to ride Cliff at Rutgers because I just think his numbers have a chance to be incredible. So, yeah, it's big man heavy. I'm interested to see if Michigan State has an all conference performer or if they're just a bunch of. I wrote down good, Malik Hall. Players. I have Malik Hall second team. I think we're going to see a big year out of Malik Hall. Okay. I, think end up being I can a see that. Guy. Jalen Pickett, your guy at Penn State, I have him on a second team. Yep. Um, and I, I think, look, Jameson Battle, I have him on a second team as well. Um, what but about the- Hepburn or Wall? I, I you know, just- the, guys, on the Big Ten preseason team, there was one program that had multiple honorees. Who was the program? Wisconsin with those two guys. Yeah. They both made the second team for Jeff Goodman's preview, which is part of the reason why you should never trust get Jeff Goodman uh, with anything. All right. What is the X factor for you guys in the league title race? If there is one, you, I, I'll, I'll go first. I think it's, it's, I mentioned this earlier, it's absolutely point guard play. Right, we we haven't we haven't mentioned one pure point guard in terms of being like on that first team All America team. Sky Clark coming off the ACL, Xavier Johnson consistently inconsistent. Um, but that's where Jaylen, Michigan State's good. Yeah, Jalen Llewellyn like, d- taking a step forward. He, I would even say like AJ Hogarth and, and and Tyson Walker are good players, but like, are you really the, willing to go all in on them? We have no idea what the point guard situation is going to end up being at Purdue. We have no idea what the point guard situation is going to end up being at Ohio State. They're probably starting a freshman, right? Is Paul McKay he really a point guard that you're going to trust at Rutgers? Like, there's the best point guard in the conference might end up being Chucky Hepper. Like, is it is that is that crazy? Jalen Pickett? Like, it's so it, whoever has the best point guard play, I think, is going to end up being the team that wins the league out of the top. Yeah, I think my X factor to the regular season title race is the two schools in Michigan, really. And I think particularly with Michigan, it's the same X factor that there was in place last year for the Wolverines, and that is their freshman class. They do bring in uh, a top-tier recruiting class. It's ranked 11th in the country. And Terrace Reed and Jed Howard, I'm really intrigued to see how Jed Howard figures into things. And then to T.O.'s point earlier, like Jalen Llewellyn, that was a really nice addition and if Llewellyn can give them something, I mean, remember, they lose Brooks. That's a big loss for everything that he meant to that team. They got to be able to mold things together. Michigan is always fascinating to me because I think, I think they're disciplined. I think they defend pretty well. I think they rebound the basketball. But, guys, when they had perimeter shooting last year versus when they didn't have perimeter shooting, it was such a different team. And then for me, in a year of mystery in the Big Ten, how many times have we seen when there's an open doorway, Tom Izzo finds a way to get to the door? Bingo, yeah. So Michigan State, to me, is an X factor because they do have returning players. They lost their top three scores, but they do have some returning players. And, like, I feel like we're all kind of out on them at the moment. And anytime I've been in that position, Izzo normally proves me wrong. So the two schools in Michigan, and then the biggest thing, you said point guard play. But, like, at the end of the day, what's the thing that the Big Ten has that sometimes dooms them in March? An Big. inability an inability to make three-point shots. Oh, like, yeah. whoever, whoever ends up first in the Big Ten in three-point shooting is probably going to have a chance to win the league. Well, that's going to be Purdue. You can, uh, you can book that in gold, it, it, that they're going to end up being the, uh, the best three-point shooting team. One, one name you wanna, I want to mention from Michigan we haven't mentioned yet, Youssef Kayet, Lebanese uh, freshman coming in. Really, good really good player. They really like him. Six nine, first little wing. I think he's got a chance. Hey, to- where did he commit on? Where did how did he was he- You know what his nickname is? Yo yo. You want to know what he said when he jumped on there and he made his commitment? He said, "Go Blues, not go blue, go Blues." So I love this. Uh, I love Yo Yo Kayet. Oh, he's played in France. Yeah, he's good. Isn't isn't that like the <laughs> soccer team? Let's blue. Yeah. 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 yeah, World Cup coming. I want to do a World Cup field of sixty eight bracket challenge. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm, Let's out. Go. I'm all the way um, out. Fanta, Fanta, now's your time. You mentioned you had a bold take. I want your bold prediction. I want you to go bold, okay? T.O. went pretty bold on the Big East last week. I went the boldest on the Big East last week. I think I think that's fair to say. I don't get to do an X-Factor. 
What, what's okay? Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh, have have how quick Illinois can come together. That's the most transfer ridden roster uh, in the entire league. How quick they can come together and to even dive Tra- deeper. Transfer ridden. How like good can like Coleman Hawkins disease. be? They're transfer riddled. They're transfer riddled. riddled. <laughs> Sorry, that's probably the wrong way to say that, but I said it. Uh, but Coleman Hawkins, how quick can he be your go-to guy and decision maker? Because, like, he's got all the tools. Does he have all the basketball IQ? The basketball brain power. <laughs> going all in on him. Oh, this dude's a fucking idiot. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> but but if you're going to function on that backside of, of that, what, what is it, the, the spread offense? Like, yeah. if you're going to function on that backside, there's a lot of reads to be made. Oh, like, yeah. if he's going to be that guy, like, he's going to have to be really good, and then he's going to be playing against some guys who want the basketball. Terrence Shannon wants the basketball. That's the reason he left yep. Texas Tech. Like, he wants the basketball. Can they mesh? I think that's the biggest X factor. Yep. All right, Fanta, give me your uh, give me your bold prediction. The Big Ten will have three teams in the second weekend of the NCAA tournament, if not four. We just hated on them for an hour. I'm telling you, I didn't. I think that the NCAA tournament is the epitome of random results and things just sometimes not making an ounce of sense. Mm. Last year, the ACC performed after one of the more underwhelming years in the history of the conference. Just when you're down, just when you're out, it serves as fuel. The Big Ten still has some high-level talent. If Illinois finds its way, Hunter Dickinson, all he's known is winning in the NCAA tournament. He's won at a very high level. And then I'm just betting I've got Illinois and Michigan. All I need to do to make this bull take come through is either the King of March, Tom Izzo, or maybe Purdue and Matt Painter, or Indiana actually lives up to expectations. It's really not that impossible. And it should be the standard for the Big Ten, but they haven't lived up to it. I think in the year that you're totally down on them, they actually step up and get a couple of teams that have a better draw than you think. Here's the deal. Big Ten teams have typically been in the role of that 3-4-5 seed. And guess what? Fours and fives in the NCAA tournament are the most susceptible to getting picked off. Michigan last year was a six seed. They made it into the second weekend. They faced Colorado State and they faced Tennessee. Sometimes in the NCAA tournament, the sevens, eights, nines, tens, sometimes get a better pathway than being the four or five where all the pressure is on you. I think the big, big Carolina might, last year, I think the big 10 might have some more teams in that zone, but I think they might benefit because guess what guys, if I'm a freaking one seed and I got to face Matt painter in the first weekend, I'm sorry. That is not an award. That's not a reward for me. So I like the big 10 to get three teams to the second weekend. T.O. Give me something better than that, please. I was just going to say your Fox is showing your Fox. Your Fox <laughs> is showing. Um, Guys, it, it's not really a hot take league. I think Minnesota could make a run to the NIT. <laughs> like, are you Michigan- kidding me? That's terrible. That's God. a worse take than mine. That's no, your take? no. All right, you're cut off. Tio's cut off. Tio's cut, cut off. off. You don't get to make no more. They are what they are. They, if there's Those one thing about the Big Ten, we know what they are before they see. No, we know what they are. Okay, your here's here's what take I'm going to say. That Minnesota's going to make the NIT. You're welcome. Yeah. Get You're out welcome. of here, T.O., get out of here. T.O., all right, I got you one. I got you one. Michigan State gets to the top four of the league. T.O., well, that's t- not bold either. Okay, how bold T-O. do you want me to get? How T-O. bold do you want me to get? There's no, but Time there's out. nothing Time bold out. to be yeah, T.O. T.O. is banned. And everybody T-O. knows what's going to happen. They're going to dominate November because oh, they got a bunch of 30-year-olds oh. on the roster. They're going to be overrated as all hell, and then they're going to get their brakes beat in by the time the NCAA tournament no. comes okay. around. So that's my bold prediction right there. If we're going to set this is this, this show is sponsored by Bet Rivers. They are partners. They're the best sports book to use, especially if you're out in the Midwest. If you are going to give me an over-under, on the number of teams that make it to the Sweet 16 out of the Big Ten, I'm going to set that line at 1.5. I'm going to take the under, and I'm also going to make the prediction that we don't get a single Big Ten team. I think that's much more likely that we don't have a single Big Ten team in the second weekend of the NCAA tournament than it is that we have more than one Big Ten team in the second weekend of the NCAA tour- tournament. I, I feel, just don't I, see I feel it. A, I feel a hot dog suit bet coming on between you and Fanta right there. I just don't see it. I How confident are you in your hot take, Fanta? No. Not at all. I'm more confident than he was in uh, in Maryland last year. <laughs> I'm confident in my take. I'm so, confident so, okay, in my take. Okay, so the over-under is a, a, a team and a half in the second weekend of the Big Ten. 
And wait, you're not going to take that, Fanta? That's it? Oh, I'm taking the over. Okay. I'm taking, taking the, the over. over. I'm not Rob, making a hot dog. You're to wear a hot dog suit. I'm not, I'm not doing a no, hot dog no. suit, Ben. Get out of here. You weren't, I'm Damn, not dumb enough to do a hot dog no, suit. Oh, here we are. This, this is all fluff. All this right. Is all wait a minute. Fluff. Wait a minute. All your little hot, hot takes or whatever. If you ain't going to stand behind Hold it, it's all on. fluff. If, if it's <laughs> under a team and a half, then you both have to hop on a mechanical bull in Houston. If it's no. over a team and a half, I'm hopping on. Or, or excuse me, if it's under say, a team and, no, Fanta, if, if anybody, I, I'm, I'm siding with you on this. Oh, you're saying okay. So if it's under a team and a half, Rob's hopping on. No, I'm not doing a mechanical bull. We're not doing. No, hop behind your stand beside <laughs> your stuff right no, here. Just yeah, like we still excuse behind me. See what's happening right here. You guys are half, trying to pressure me. I'm I don't make on. the bad bets. You guys make the bad bets. That I'm not like doing you. that. Like, you, I know what's okay, a bad. So you just I'm not. Say, I'm not making this prediction because I think it's going to happen. We said go bold. If it's under team and half, okay, so that's your, okay. So credibility is instantly lost, right? Well, there. I like I like I like how you're you're making this bet now, but you wouldn't take the Creighton bet when I said Ryan Kalkbrenner <laughs> Player of the Year. Oh, they man. stand by what they say. <laughs> they, they, stand, <laughs> they stand by what they say. Listen, like this has been another episode out. of the DTF like podcast. I'm going to cut this off before these two. Uh, <laughs> These two directors. make sure you follow us on Twitter. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe there. Do all those things that make us happy as podcasters. We will see you guys again next week. I don't even know what league we're previewing next week. It'll be something. We'll figure it out. Later. Wow. We're dropping our merch. We got to start calling Underwood Daddy Brad. But I'm a big odd guy. Breaking news. The Field of 68 has an online store, and it's your one-stop shop for the latest and greatest merch in college basketball and college football. You can find shirts to support your favorite team, make fun of your rival team, or boast Field of 68 catchphrases like Daddy Brad, Cussing and Discussing, and the Star Heels. Go to www.fieldof68.shop today and enter promo code TOUCHDOWN for 20% off at checkout.